been in a lot of places. Christy School, Farm Home, Rad, Albert and Occur. Five different foster homes, therapeutic foster homes. I've been at the farm home and I've been occurring all those and then I've been in like 20 different foster homes. My son first went to counseling when he was three. Psychiatric inpatient facilities for children, uh, residential treatment facilities, um, outpatient services, in-home skills training, uh, other home-based and community-based care. I was in three residential treatment facilities. A lot of places. Psychiatrist, specialist in autism, a wraparound organ, caseworker, parole officer, my foster dad, caseworker, attorneys, investigators, school staff, my PO, my caseworker, mm -hmm. attorneys, my aunt, judges. <laughs> Can you think of some times when decisions about your service or treatment were made and you didn't have any input? Oh God, all, all the time. Um, when I got moved to different treatment facilities or foster homes, I had no input of where I went or how I went or how long or when. How did I feel about being put in different places? About your input not being without your input? Um, hopeless. Um, like I had no no hope or control over anything. They, they controlled my life. They were living my life for me. I was just there. They all decided that it was better if I went to a shelter instead of a foster home. And I didn't find out about it until pretty much they were like, all right, you're going to go to a shelter in the next week. At first I was okay with it, but then I realized that it wasn't going to help me and get me where I want to be. I was supposed to be in the meeting and they did the whole thing and then they called me in the last five minutes to tell me about it. And and how did that make you feel? Uh, really upset. Because mm -hmm. I was supposed to help them plan it and they planned it and then they called me. Did it work well for you though? Not really. They would um, ask me questions and I would say something. Um, say they asked me like what I would like to do or where I would like to go. Like if they gave me a choice between two treatment centers and I said I'd want to go to one, um, I'd have my parole officer or somebody else peep in and say, well, I want her to go to this one. And I'd end up going to the whole other opposite one that I didn't want to go to. Can you think of some times when you feel that your input was valued? Um, not much, but if it was, rarely. If you don't have say, you basically are bottling everything up and then take it out in destructive ways. Do you think that it's important for people your age to participate in their decision making? Well, yeah, definitely, because if they don't get to, then it's like their whole lives are being planned for them ahead of time. I know what I want and what my dreams are, and no one can tell me any different. I had a rap meeting and uh, they asked me if uh, I had any ideas and I told them one of my ideas and uh, it actually is part of the rap meeting now. I've led an entire meeting before a couple of times my youth decision meeting and a couple of meetings at school. Okay and did they turn out good or how did you feel? They turned out really good. It was different from other meetings because my other meetings I didn't say anything. I. I just let other people say what they thought they wanted me to have. I spoke up and said that it would be more beneficial to go into a foster home than to shelter because the shelter wasn't going to help me at all. It was just play, a place to live in the foster home since I've been there. I've gotten my license, I've joined, I've started college, and I've been very successful in life. So, you know, you have to be able to kind of be raised to make your own choices, not have them made for you. Give them a shot to see, see what they want to do. Because they know what's best for them. They know themselves better than anybody. And even if you're not quite thinking in the best of 
manners or if your um, disability is getting in the way, some part of what is best for you will come out. When young people make their own decisions, um, it usually turns out better. Like say they made a decision to go somewhere um, in their head that they, they had control over that decision so they're going to make the best of that decision. And now if a young person goes and, like if I were to go somewhere back then and I didn't want to be there, I wasn't going to make it work. I didn't want to be there. Why even try to make it work? You know, so it just, if they made me do something, it just turned out horrible. Like, I fought, you, you fight it, you don't want to be there. But if you actually want something and you're a part of this decision, you're more motivated to make things work in a positive way. If, if we as parents, therapists, and teachers shut up and listen long enough, I think it's, um, we'd be surprised at how much we can learn from our kids and how much they can teach us. I had a lot of those fears myself because, you know, there were times where my niece would get very oppositional, um, you know, swearing and calling people names and um, she would be very disruptive. And I, you know, there were times where I knew that things that were going to be said at the meeting were going to be things that she didn't like. And so, honestly, I didn't want her there. What being a part of this process has really reinforced for me and helped me learn in a much greater way is that by doing that, we were reinforcing to her that she was powerless and that she did not have control over her own life. And if there's anything that was important to her, it was having a sense of control. I think we make a lot of assumptions um, that limit what youth are capable of doing. My experience is that the youth do learn, mm -hmm. um, and it actually can help um, them heal as well. I have loved this process. Um, I think the most, the, the neatest thing for me is watching um, the youth that are participating. Mm -hmm. um, and these are all youth. I know they've all been involved in mental health or had their, you know, their own issues with that. Um, and a lot of them, I think, are, are children that people would be surprised that they're involved in something like this. Mm -hmm. And to me, they're committed, they come every time, they, they have great suggestions. It's been really inspiring to me to, to see them in this capacity mm -hmm. and to sit at a table with adults and really um, be part of a team mm -hmm. that's creating something like this. It's, it's made me even believe even more mm -hmm. that the more we can get the youth to participate and be in a decision-making process, and that really, if we expect that of them, mm -hmm. that they'll rise to the challenge. Um, and that I think we, I think we don't expect enough. Mm -hmm. I didn't mean, used to like not speak at all. Mm -hmm. but now they can't shut me up. <laughs> <laughs>